Hey guys, welcome back to my poker vlog. This is the ninth episode, if you could believe it. Today's session takes place at Texas Card House in North Austin, where I sit down for some 1 2 No Limit Hold'em. And if you're new to the channel, then you should know that TCH runs $5 Pot Limit Omaha Bomb Pots about once per orbit and once every dealer change. So you end up playing anywhere between kind of around four to six Bomb Pots per hour. And as you probably guessed from this vlog's title, most of the interesting hands from the session happen during these Bomb Pots. Uh, I also wanted to share that I've been trying to uh, work on improving my game a little bit, doing some reading. Uh, so I picked up uh, the Harrington on no cash, uh, excuse me, on cash games, uh, volume one. Uh, this is actually a book that I read probably 15 or so years ago. Um, I haven't done a lot of poker playing since then. Uh, if you watched one of my previous episodes, you've seen that I had like a 12 year hiatus from poker, give or take, with you know a few random sessions in there. Um, but for the most part, I haven't really played for a long time. So, uh, trying to, uh, refresh myself on some concepts, um, pot odds, you'll see that I, I, uh, involve some pot odd calculations in this, uh, session. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let's get to the session. I buy in for $300. I, uh, I play for about two hours total. Uh, and please, if you enjoy the vlog, hit the like and subscribe. Let's get to it. This first hand is a PLO bomb pot, and there's eight players to the flop. The pot is $40. I've got nine, seven, four, three with spades and diamonds. The flop comes eight, six, four rainbow on top, and seven, ace, six with two hearts on bottom. So I've got an open-ended straight draw on the top board and a middle pair on the bottom board. It checks to the hijack, who bets half the pot for $20. The button calls, the big blind calls, and I decide to call here since I'm getting five to one on a call and have better odds than that of hitting my straight. The turn brings the five of hearts on top, and the eight of spades on bottom. I hit the nut straight on the top board, and even better, there are no draws to a flush on that board. I also pick up a flush draw on the bottom board. When it checks to me, I bet $75. It ends up folding around, and I pick up the pot. Thank you. For this next hand, I've got queen jack suited in clubs. I'm sitting in the small blind. Three players limp in. I decide to complete here since I'm still pretty new to the table and I don't want to be in a raised pot out of position with this hand. The big blind checks his option. The flop comes jack 10 9 with two diamonds. So I've got top pair with a queen kicker and an open ended straight draw. I lead for $6. The big blind calls, the middle position player ends up raising to $20. I call since it's only $14 more in hopes of hitting my draw or perhaps another jack and the big blind makes the call too. The pot's now $70. The turn brings the seven of spades. I don't improve, and there's now four to a straight on the board. I check, the big blind checks, and the middle position player bets $20 again. The $20 makes it seem like he's scared of the straight, but I don't really want to get involved in a big hand here, and I have no reason to play back, so I just give up and fold. This next hand is another PLO bomb pot. There's eight players to the flop, and the pot's $40. I've got king seven six four with spades and hearts. I'm sitting in the hijack. The flop comes queen queen three rainbow on top and king five seven rainbow on bottom. I flop top and bottom pair and an open ended straight draw on the bottom board. It checks to me and I bet $25. Four players make the call. The pot's now $165. The turn brings the two of spades on top and the ten of spades on bottom. I don't improve on either board and this time when it checks to me, I check behind for pot control. The player behind me checks as well and we get a free river. The river brings the ace of diamonds on top and the five of diamonds on bottom. Unfortunately, I've missed filling up or completing my straight, and I'm just hoping for a free showdown. With five players in the pot, that's unlikely. The small blind player ends up betting pot for $160, and I can't call here with my holding. I make the fold. The player who bets the river shows that he hit quad fives on the bottom board. This next hand is another PLO bomb pot. There's eight players to the flop, and the pot is $40. I've got 7322 with diamonds. As soon as I see my hand, I internally chuckle and expect to be throwing this one into the muck as soon as the action comes to me. However, the flop comes 5 queen 7 rainbow on top and 2 ace 2 rainbow on bottom. So I flop quad deuces on the bottom board. I've also got second pair on the top board, but I'm really not concerned with it since I'm just looking to maximize value on that bottom board. I check the flop to let some other players' hands improve, and everyone else checks behind. The turn brings the 6 of hearts on top and the jack of hearts on bottom. So there's no improvement to my hand on the top board, but it's no concern. I'm just hoping some other players improved enough to put some money in the pot now. I open for $25 and we end up getting two callers. The pot's $115.
the river brings the four of clubs on top and the ten of spades on bottom. I'm first to act, and with only two other players left in the pot at this point, I want to see if I can scoop here with a scary bet. I lead here for $100. The first player behind folds immediately. The second player thinks for a bit and finally ends up folding as well. Swap the quads. The deuces. Never loses. <laughs> We've got yet another PLO bomb pot. This time I've got King King Jack Six with clubs. There's eight players to the flop and the pot's $40 and I'm sitting in the cutoff. The flop comes two ten six with two diamonds and eight Jack Queen with two clubs. I just have an overpair on the top board, but I flop the second nut flush draw on bottom. I'm a little wary about there being an ace high flush draw out there though. Everyone checks, so we get to see a free turn. The turn brings the two of spades on top and the five of clubs on bottom. So I pick up the king high flush draw on the bottom board. My hand on top improves to two pair, though I'm assuming I'm behind unless I boat up on the river. It checks around, and being the second to last player to act, I feel pretty confident to make a bet here. I make it $25 and get two callers, bringing the pot to $115. On the river we see the three of clubs on top and the four of clubs on bottom. There are now seven clubs spoken for between both boards and my hand. With only six left in the deck, I'm pretty hopeful that there's not an ace high flush among the other players. It checks to me again, and I bet $60 this time, trying to get as much value as possible from both players. Both players end up making the call, and we head to showdown. We see ace ace 7 2 for trips on top, and queen 10 5 4 with diamonds for a flush draw that turned into a straight on the top board. My flush is good on bottom, and I scoop half the pot for $145. And then I think I got the flush on bottom. Oh. Yeah. Take our 60 back. Yeah. All right. Thank you. In this next hand, we've got, yep, that's right, another PLO bomb pot. This time I've got Queen 10 9 2 with three clubs. There's eight players to the flop, so the pot's $40. I'm sitting on the button. The flop comes King 6 8 with two hearts on top and two queen three with two hearts on bottom. I flop top and bottom pair on the bottom board and a gut shot with some backdoor draws on the top board. The early position player bets $20, two players call behind, and I make a somewhat loose call here in hopes of improving. One player calls behind and we see five players to the turn with $140 in the pot. On the turn we see the nine of spades on top and the five of diamonds on bottom. I pick up a weak pair on the top board along with a second gut shot draw. My hand doesn't improve on the bottom board. I do consider the idea that with so many hearts out there, at least one player was playing with the hopes of a heart draw hitting. It's possible my hand could be good on the bottom board still. The same player who bet before leads again for $20. My odds are so good that I don't feel like I can fold and everyone seems to agree as we all continue to the river. The pot's now $240. The river comes three of diamonds on top and jack of diamonds on bottom. At this point, my hand isn't very good on either board. However, the hearts on both boards miss, and I imagine there's at least one player who's disappointed that they missed the flush. It checks around, I end up showing my hand, and it turns out that my two pair is good on the bottom board for half the pot, winning $120. Queens and twos on bottom. Queens and deuces on the bottom here, guys. Oh. oh, so many hearts. All right. This next hand is yet another PLO bomb pot. I've got King 954 with hearts, and I'm sitting under the gun. There's eight players to the flop, and the pot's $40. The flop comes queen six two with two hearts on top and five jack eight with all diamonds on bottom. I flop the second nut flush draw and a gut shot draw on the top board and second pair on a scary bottom board. The middle position player bets pot for $40. The player to my right calls and I decide to call here getting three to one to hit my flush or my gut shot and one more player calls behind improving my pot odds further. The pot's now $200. The turn comes the 10 of diamonds on top and the ace of clubs on bottom. I miss my draws on the turn, and even though I picked up a second gut shot draw, I imagine I'll be folding if anyone makes a healthy bet here. 
The same player as before, continuation bets for pot, $200, and the player beside me goes all in with the original better covered. I make an easy fold here, as does the player to my left. The original better calls the all in and the river brings the three of clubs on top and the nine of clubs on bottom. Although the river brings the three I needed for one of my gut shot draws, I think I made the correct choice to fold here. We see both players show a set on the top board and a flush on the bottom board, with the original better having the higher valued hand on both boards for a scoop. If you thought this next hand was going to be a PLO bomb pot, you're wrong. We've got a regular hold'em hand this time. I've got king queen suited in spades on the button. The first player to act raises to $15 and the second player calls. It folds to me and I decided that this was a good enough hand to 3-bet in hopes of taking the pot or isolating. I make it $50, a little more than 3 times the initial raise. However, we end up seeing the small blind cold call my re-raise and both other players call as well. The pot's now $202. The flop comes 8-8 eight, eight, Jack Rainbow. It checks to me and even though this is a pretty obvious check behind, I make a pretty horrendous decision to continuation bet here in hopes of appearing strong given my original 3-bet. I make it $85. The small blind goes all in for about $133 and the under the gun player goes all in as well for $148. At this point, I'm very clearly behind. However, I only have to call $63 to win $483. I only have to be right making a call here once every seven times, give or take, in order to be profitable. I end up hoping that my two cards are live and I decide to make the call. The small blind flips over ace jack off for top pair top kicker, and my hand is still live here. The other player ends up showing pocket jacks, and at first I think I'm still live before realizing that they actually flopped a boat, and I'm pretty much drawing dead to runner kings or runner queens. The turn brings the three of spades, and the river brings the seven of hearts. I'm officially drawing dead on the turn, and I learn a pretty expensive but valuable lesson about sea betting in a multi-way pot where too many people have shown interest. In my very last hand of the session, which immediately follows the previous hand you saw, I've got ace-five suited in spades, and I'm sitting in the cutoff. Several players limp into the pot, and I raise to $12. The small blind and the under the gun player both call. The pot's now $38. The flop comes 6 10 3 with two clubs. I miss the flop, though I have some backdoor draws. The under the gun player leads for $10. I don't have anything here, but I decide that since I have position, floating here isn't a bad option since I could pick up a draw or win the pot with a bet on a later street. The small blind player ends up making the call as well. The turn brings the four of diamonds. Although I was hoping to see a spade or an ace on the turn, the four now ends up giving me a straight draw. The under the gun player leads for $30 this time. His bet is a little stronger now, and I imagine that he probably has a top pair type of hand. I think any two or seven could be good here, and perhaps an ace as well. In all, I figure that I've got about 3 to 1 odds to hit the card that I need, and I'm getting almost 3.5 to 1 on a call. I decide to put my chips in, and the third player folds. The pot's now $128. The river brings the two of diamonds. I hit my money card. The way I played the hand, it should also be pretty hard for my opponent to put me on a 5 for the straight. My opponent leads into me for $60. I feign like I'm thinking for a little bit before pushing all in for 180 total. My opponent thinks for about 20 seconds before making the call. He ends up showing that he flops two pair, calling my initial raise with 6-3 offsuit under the gun. I scoop the $488 pot. Oh man, oh, sorry man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, I got, got lucky on that one. I'm like, what is he getting? <laughs> so that was a really fun session. Uh, there was a lot of bomb pot action, as you saw. Uh, like I said earlier, we bought in for $300, and I ended up cashing out for $483, so it was a $183 win. Um, you know, minus expenses. So I played for a little over two hours, uh, two and a quarter hours. So it was $27 plus a couple dollars in tip. So the final take home was $154. Uh, I'm curious what you all think. Do you enjoy watching the bomb pot hands? Do you, have you ever played the bomb pot hands? Do you, do you play them yourself and enjoy them? Uh, or you just, you'd like to stick to the hold'em? Uh, you know, let me know what you like watching, what you like seeing. Uh, if you enjoyed the vlog, hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Uh, otherwise, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next vlog. Take care, everybody.